Hey guys, Mitko here from DN Models. Today we're opening the box of MTLB, one of the newest additions to Trumpeter line released in 2016. The kit number is 05578 and is the first one of three MTLBs released on the market. The kit, in my opinion, is one of the best kits in 35th scale released from Trumpeter. This is due to several facts. First, it features a lot of goodies out of the box. Those include tracks, which can be turned into workable, then interior, then complete engine and a gearbox. That is a vehicle which previously we had from Skiff and that is mediocre kit for today's standards. It can be turned into something beautiful as seen in Rinaldi's Tankard 3 Modern Armor where you can find it built by a guest author. However, here we have a basis for a lot more and I will show you why in a minute. Inside the box we have a nice color leaflet with the highlights of this kit described thoroughly and visibly shown with detailed renderings. The kit features more than 1100 parts, almost 100 of which are photo -ed. Every hatch and door is positionable and almost all of the interior features can be shown. This promises to be a long and complicated build but probably will be easier compared to Mini Art and Mang due to the trumpeter's engineering and approach. The instruction sheet is the typical black and white trumpeter. It starts with the description of the spruce and then the bottom of the hull which is followed by the engine. This is where the fun starts because we have a very sophisticated and thoroughly depicted engine with a beautiful detail all over. If it wasn't for the trumpeter's rather thick plastic, I would have said that this is the best engine that I've ever seen. It is very similar to what we get in the latest mini art kits, but the plastic here is easier to work with. Almost no room for super detailing. The engine is enclosed in its own deck and obviously can be left outside of the kit for showing off. As with it and the transmission, the rest of the interior parts are sectored. That means that you can install them completely or partially. Have in mind that if you decided to put everything inside, you will have very little room for whatever, even for a glimpse. The vehicle is crowded. Very clever decision from Trumpeter's engineers I found to be the fact that most of the details and interesting parts of this kit are focused on the upper parts of the vehicle. The suspension is simplified and in my opinion it should be like that. Armor models are almost always covered in mud and dirt, so no use for super complicated suspension like we are used to see with other brands like AFV Club for example. We also can find nicely done and challenging fender parts made completely from photo edge. Some touches like that bring the model closer to one with aftermarket add-ons rather than out of the box kit. From what I can see, following the instructions there are many options including the one for leaving it empty and complete only the exterior. It might seem like a bad idea, but trust me, if you choose the full interior way, you'll have a lot to work on with that tiny vehicle. On the top of the vehicle, we have quite a few photo edge parts, even though tiny, plus the fenders made from photo edge also that I mentioned will make it shine even out of the box. I am very impressed with the number of tiny parts that we have here. Everything ends with a small turret, which is the main difference between the three versions that Trumpeter released. It is up to you to choose which one you want to build, but they are all beautiful. 
Now let's take a look at the color schemes. First we have two-tone camo MTLB painted in yellow-gray colors. 201 is the number on the side, that being the only decals you should use with it. Paints and schemes here are with the help of Ammo by MIG. Then we have two more schemes to follow both with Arabic symbols. First one being a standard Russian green, pretty simple, with a couple of decals here and there. Looking like almost every standard Soviet green MTLB. And then we have a sandy yellow vehicle, of which you can find plenty of pictures on the internet. Arabic symbols on the side of it and great base for vivid weathering. Then more interesting schemes following. This time we have two and three tone camouflages, more challenging to paint and more attractive of course. The first one features strange symbols made from decals on the side, probably some Middle Eastern country. The next one is three tone camo with decals featuring number 028. This vehicle seems like a freehand painting and with contrasting and attractive colors. After that we have more and they are not the last options either. Great job from Trumpeter. First one, plain Russian green with a two-tone stripe across and in the middle of the front of the vehicle. The stripe probably will be cool looking one since the colors are signal and forest green. It will draw the eye to that part of the vehicle for sure. What follows is the modern Russian camo schemes or at least the first attempts for that. Lastly we have modern Ukrainian camouflage, a digital one. Very nicely here, the rear top of the vehicle lacks the camo spots and there you can put a lot of stowage without worrying that you will hide the beautiful camouflage. In addition to that we have the Ukrainian flag on the side of the vehicle. The end models did their little contribution here as well. We've issued some of the camo schemes and masks and we chose the ones that we found to be most attractive. Alongside with the proper paints and some small corrections that we made on those camo schemes, you might be able to get a great replica of the real thing. Check out the website for more info about these and we hope that you will find those useful. Now let's take a look at some spruce. First one that we're going to check out features some fenders, hatches, internal fuel tanks, rear side of the vehicle and mostly major plastic parts. Fenders are thicker than needed as, in the matter of fact, most of the other parts. But for many you'll find aftermarket substitute quite soon. Of course, made from photo etch. Overall detail is good, but it isn't superb. Hinges, for example, could have been more delicate. Nothing bad though. Then the sprue that features most of the engine parts. We have more delicate parts here, some of which additionally protected. Detail here is great and the engine itself features almost everything that you can imagine downsized to 35th scale. The small lines, the belts and the rollers are delicate and look quite precise. Alongside with them, larger parts doesn't lack any detail but they follow the whole wonderful look of that part of the MTLB. Some thickness issues here and there, like with the cooling fan, but nothing that you cannot sand through with the larger grid sandpaper. Texture on most of the part is superb, with some flash visible, especially over the rounded ones. Some of these can be switched for scratch parts from metal or plastic, but overall there is no absolute need for that. The largest plastic parts are the upper and the lower parts of the hull. Simplified as they are, waiting for many additional details to be attached to them. Especially the upper one. For the bottom of the vehicle it's not like that. There we have simplified suspension, lacking details, which I think is a good decision overall. There is some plastic to stare at and enjoy, but nothing special. 
Whatever the case is, most likely you will cover all of it with various weathering products. Or just simple mud from your garden. The upper part is far better. The grills are very good looking alongside with the welding lines. Ladder ones are more delicate and tinier compared to some other brands. That probably brings them down to scale properly. Two spruce with sprockets, idlers and minor parts follow. Surprisingly, alongside with the bigger parts here, we have a lot of small details, which is more than the usual amount of tiny part that I've seen in trumpeter's kits. Sprockets are nice, with rivets and engravings all over them, and this is great since they are probably the most attractive part of the MTLB lower area, with its rather simple suspension appearance. The small parts like handles, hooks and lines are clear without defects or flash and even though some of those probably will be exchanged for tin wire by many, the ones that we have appear to be of very fine quality. Next sprue holds some miscellaneous parts amongst which some from the suspension, hatches, the antenna and others. What catches the eye here is the fact that the sprues are not overcrowded in general. Thus, within the building process there will be no hassle finding any element on them quickly. Maybe the attachment points of some parts are thicker than needed and have the potential to leave you with damaged detail, but sharp cutters should solve that. Transmission parts on the next sprue. Same thing here, neat arrangement with great texture and detail. Once you cut out and use the bigger parts, the sprue will be left with few details on it and I think that finding anything will be quite easy here. This is important part of the engineering process which many companies fail to acknowledge spreading parts along the sprues without following any logic. Often that can bring confusion or delay in the building process which can be boring for many. Hopefully here we will get a decent fit of everything as well. The thing that I got to admit to Trumpeter is that they do follow their style. Even though improving with their kits over the years the overall appearance is pretty much like on the ones we had 15 years ago. They did leave their own mark in the plastic world and there is no doubt about that. Now the sprue with the turret and its armament and three equal sprues which holds the wheels and some minor parts next to them. The sprue with the turret is the sprue that makes the difference in between the different versions that we have from Trumpeter. So far we had three MTLBs but probably there will be many to follow. Hopefully a one with the ZSU-23-2 in the place of that turret. Sprue A, the one with the wheels and the tiny parts, show us how nicely Trumpeter can do their job. Threads are visible and otherwise simple looking wheels in reality can be done surprisingly good in scale. Some damage on those, either complete or partial, and you will have very neat looking lower parts. Next we have tracks. We have a lot of those divided into two types of sprues. Teeth and track lengths. These are very tiny, one of the smallest tracks in 35th scale that I've seen. Even with that, the detail on them is absolutely fantastic. You will need patience with these since the teeth will be a tedious job. However, those can be turned into workable with a pin vise, a wire and a couple of free days of your time. I've seen such an improvement on trumpeter tracks and in my book they beat frills all the time. If you decide to go down that road though and manage to keep your nerves throughout the whole process it is pretty much guaranteed that you'll have 
amazing results in the end. The last parts I'm going to show you are the clear ones. A back with photo etch sheet, a brass wire combined with one more photo etch sheet and a small sheet of decals carefully packed and covered. Let's start with the clear parts. They are not the most important part of any armor kit, but this time here this doesn't count. MTLBs have some screens here and there and these are important. Then the photo etch parts. Even though they are thicker compared to Meng and Mini Art, these are good. They are very easy to work with when it comes down to trumpeter or hobby boss. Brass wire too of course. Very nice add-ons. Maybe in between the different versions we will have some different sheets, but I am only speculating here. Whatever the case is, photo edge sheets here are plenty and of nice quality. Great job from Trumpeter as always. Decals, well, they are very good, but not as good as masks, and with one fact in mind, that is that MTLBs are often unmarked with heavy weathering so you don't need to pay any special attention here. If you decide to use those, there will be no problem with them whatsoever. Well, that is that with the Trumpeter's MTLB and this is one very fine kit with full interior, amazing engine, superb tracks and many many options for replicating. That is something that I've waited for a while since I adored the shape of those AFVs. It reminds me of the Yacht Panzers and those started me with the armor modeling. There are two more options for the MTLBs from Trumpeter and if I am not mistaken one self-propelled howitzer based on that too. There will be more, that is certain. Some of the turret detail might need aftermarket as well as eventually the fenders and other not so important parts, but overall 10 out of 10, this time from Trumpeter. Full interior kits are the newest wave on the armor scale modeling market and Trumpeter are onto that alongside with others. I love that kit and I can only highly recommend it to everybody. Check out the description below to get it and some masks for it at DN Models shop. Thanks for watching, I hope you found that useful and entertaining of course. Please share, comment and subscribe maybe hit that like button too. Bye from me and I will see you in the next one.